P360TV proudly presents messages of inspirational stories. Live streaming now to millions of devices, including Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Android TV, YouTube Live, Facebook Live. With your host, Donna Guinwa, producer and host. Jim Grant, producer and host. Along with Michaela Vidal, administrator and host. And Gaia Guinwa Balcone Weda, editor in chief. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. And our intro video is so dated and out of step. We got to get that thing up to speed because we got our girl back with us, Charlene Fouts. She was with us originally as a host, and we're so glad that she's able to join us again. She is the founder of the Healing Acres Never Again, and we are so proud to recognize this wonderful organization that Charlene created. The Healing Acres Never Again org. Their, their website is under construction right now, but you can catch them on Facebook. Healing Acres Never Again. It's international. And we had a good friend of yours uh, down in Australia. I'm trying to think of Nathan's last name. Uh, it's Kenneth Nathan. Kenneth Nathan. I thought of his last name. That's what I meant yeah. to say. Two first names. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean to tell you. Yeah, because I knew I know a lot of Nathans, and but Ken Nathan. Yeah, I remember we had him on twice. As a matter of fact, didn't we? We did. Yes, he's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> on, on our earlier shows, and ladies and gentlemen, the Healing Acres Never Again. I'm going to let Charlene just take a few moments to share what that organization is all about, if, if you would, please, ma'am. Great. Yeah, um, Healing Acres Never Again is, I call it Hannah for short, so we, you can find it under Hannah. And I created it because of my own experience with uh, sexual trauma. Mm -hmm. And I go into just different aspects of healing and the different stages that you have to go through. So we help people who have been through sexual trauma, like rape, sex, uh, childhood sexual uh, abuse, any kind of sexual abuse, uh, abortion, we go mm -hmm. into those kind of therapies and how we can help people get back to a, a healing position in life. Yeah, and that's very important in life, ladies and gentlemen, because our topic today is, of course, how we're going to survive uh, inflation, and we will. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to, it's going to be more aggravating than anything else, I think. But the point of it is, in the process, we got to be a bright light. we got to let our candles shine in this old world. And Charlene is kind of like Donna. Donna started her organization because on based her experience. Donna had, uh, she suffers from MS and Donna Quinoa. Uh, she also had, the day that she was diagnosed with, and the doctor told her she had MS, she was going over after that appointment to see the surgeon who was going to schedule the first of her brain surgeries. She had an aneurysm, a rather large aneurysm behind her right eye. And the first surgery was to see what we're going to do. <laughs> the second surgery was to repair it. And the third surgery was to make sure that it was fixed. This left Donna in a very awkward situation. Not awkward. It was a hard situation. Excuse me. Uh, she could not put together a complete sentence for almost two years. Her brain and her tongue just could not get the words connected. And her being a single mom with three teenagers, she went through a lot and she survived it. And that's why Donna created uh, high energy right now at the DonnaGuinois.com website. And you can email Donna at high energy right now because Donna talks about there's one of three things or a combination of three things that blocks your energy. And that is either a person, a place, or a thing or a combination thereof. And in Charlene's case, she created this organization based on the experiences that she went through in her life. And I, you know, 
she had the attitude, I survived this and now I can be a blessing and help others survive. So that is why she created the Healing Acres Never Again. And Charlene, that's international as well, is it not? It is. Our vice president's in Australia. We're all over the world. We're in South Africa, Africa. We're in mm. Germany. We have uh, places all over the world. So yeah. all over the U.S. Yeah, absolutely. That's a wonderful charity. And these two ladies are an inspiration to us all because you too can be a blessing to someone. Look for how you can be a blessing to someone else. And today, uh, before we get started, we're going to talk about some fun things. This is August the 1st and some of the holidays today, there is a whole bunch of them. We don't have time to go through each one of them, but I've got to talk about this is dog, Dogust first. That's D O G U S T first. <laughs> August first is known as Dogust first. It's the universal birthday that's been given for all of the dogs who are, that live in shelter and in, in animal shelters, because as we all know, there's thousands and thousands, if not millions, of dogs that land in animal shelters. And their only hope is to find a home because dogs are just a creature that's created to, to be part of our family. And I've often said, can you imagine what a wonderful world this world would be if everyone had the heart of the family dog? That would solve a lot of problems, wouldn't it, wouldn't it Charlene? I, I love it. Everybody loves dogs, and they all deserve a birthday. Because when oh, you yeah. don't get a dog, when you get a dog from the shelter, you don't know when their birthday was. So I love mm -hmm. that. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's been, uh, there's a big leap for animal production, pr protection, excuse me. Uh, back in 1866, Henry Berg founded the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. And I've often said, if someone is <clears throat> if someone is cruel to an animal, they're demonstrating what a pitiful person they are inside, because all they're doing is vomiting the hate, the hateful energy they have stored inside on an innocent animal. Yes, I know dogs can be aggravating, <laughs> but I mean, I'm talking about a habit of doing that. And in 20 and 2003, an eye opening film, Cynthia Wade's documentary about the ethics of animal welfare, Shelter Dogs, was released. It's a great film. And in 2013, Justice is Served, an ASPCA partnership with the New York Police Department, result in a 200% increase in the number of animal cruelty arrests throughout New York City. And I tell you, I just don't have any respect for anyone that would mistreat an innocent animal. I just don't. I mean, I understand. I, I mean, I gotta be honest. I mean, there's times in my life, my dogs have done something, I've hit them or something like that or scolded them and then feel bad about it. And then I find myself, you know, hey, I'm, I apologize to the dog. They look at me, it's okay, I'll forgive you. I realize you're a nut. <laughs> <laughs> That's that unconditional love from a dog. Oh my goodness. And Charlene, you got a special day. I mean, yeah, this is not my day, obviously, but I'm going to let her take it away. <laughs> it can be. It's National Girlfriend Day, and it talks about just the importance of having those friends. So it talks about, you know, relationships come and go, boyfriend, mm -hmm. girlfriends come and go, but your girlfriends, and I know a lot of it's, it's, it's us girls getting together and doing things, but those last forever. And we do in any kind of healing process, of, in any kind of just life process we need friends to talk to we need people to have oh, fun yeah. with and our oh. girlfriend is there no matter what so it's uh national girlfriend day so it's a mm. good day to celebrate all your friends give them a call yeah <laughs> you know i you, you i stand corrected on that because in high school i had a real good friend uh she was just like and we were just like brother sister or cousins or whatever we were just buddies and her name was linda ramsey and I, you know, if I didn't have a date because I worked weird hours on the weekend, I worked for Carolina Freight Carriers there in Cherryville. It's pronounced Cherryville back there, but it's Cherryville, North Carolina. And sometimes I'd go in at seven in the morning, sometimes three in the afternoon or 11 at night. So I was on, I was on call. And uh, so naturally that kind of, will, you know, cut into your, you know, your, your love life. If you want to put it like that, I never had one, but I mean, I guess it could happen. <laughs> But uh, 
I'd call up Linda and I said, you have a date? She says, no. I said, I don't need Let's go somewhere. Okay. And so yeah. we just had up and going. A lot of people thought that we were, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, or there was something going to evolve in that. But no, we were just real good friends. And I tell guys, I'm sorry. I feel sorry for you if you've never had a girl that's just a real good friend. And uh, there was never any touchy feely or anything like that. We were just friends. I mean, that was it. And it was it was a wonderful relationship and uh, helped get me through high school and get me out of high school <laughs> with my sanity <laughs> and my dignity. <laughs> but it's a wonderful thing. And this past weekend, I got to share this with you, folks. Uh, we had a girl powerhouse in my house. There was my wife, Evelyn, my daughter, Lisa. My granddaughter, Michaela, Ooh. and they had their, between her and Reuben, her husband, they have seven girls. <laughs> Six of them were here. The seventh one is, is with her, with her dad. And they had, you know, they got COVID up there in the family. So, you know, she can't come back yet. But I mean, so me and me and Reuben, <laughs> we went out and did some guy things. <laughs> but we thought it was a wonderful thing for the grandmother. Oh, excuse me. The great grandmother, the grandmother, the mother, and the girls, six girls, do girl things together. Exactly. Just just and, to be able to converse. It's awesome. And, and you know what? They didn't need my help or ask me one question on anything. <laughs> Probably didn't get a word in edgewise. <laughs> no, but me and Ruth, we had a lot of fun. We did some things together, went down and you know, picked up a boat, put some wheels on it, got it stored up here and and got it cleaned up, started cleaned up on it, I should say. But also, too, ladies and gentlemen, today is homemade pie day. Holy enchiladas, Batman. Ooh, I love homemade pie. Because, you know, when it comes to your mom or your grandmother making a pie, they always add, and this is true with any dish that your, grand, your mom or grandmother makes, they make it with hands of love. There's something about that. It just, oh, it just melts in your mouth. Oh, this past weekend, we were talking about uh, the, the collard greens that we had. And they were really good because they had all these, they had bacon in. I don't know what all had in it, but they were just delicious. They had onions in Oh, man, it was just. I know a lot of people. I know some people don't like collard greens and some people do. I mean, you know, but it was just delicious. But the homemade pie day, that's what we're talking about. Sweets for my sweets and sugar for my honey is, the old, <laughs> is an old saying that I used to, I heard growing up. It never happened to me, but I heard it, you know. <laughs> but 1902, the New York Times praises pie. An article in the New York Times states pie is the food of the heroic. And in the 16th century, the queen, Queen Elizabeth I, uh, the first cherry pie is baked for Queen Elizabeth I. Man, I tell you. I tell you, when he talks about apple pie with a scoop of ice cream on it and a cup of coffee, holy enchiladas. It just don't get any better than that, does it? That sounds wonderful. My grandma used to make homemade apple pie. I loved it. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's just, you know, you could just. Mm, mm. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> where, where were we? Oh, yeah, we're in a TV studio, right? <laughs> You know, today's also Planner Day, National Planner Day, and that's about having a planner and writing things down. Back when I was growing up, we always had a planner. Now everything's digital, but it's still a planner, and it's mm -hmm. about taking that step and getting organized. So, you know, when you get up in the morning, what am I doing today? How am I, How how are my goals? Writing everything down, and it's so important, and I know mm -hmm. later on we're going to talk about things, and, uh, you know, writing Writing things down are important. Um, so mm -hmm. today we're celebrating National Planner Day. <laughs> yeah. So plan your day. Plan to watch this show. How about that? <laughs> That's right. We hope, we hope we make your planner your planner list there. <laughs> you know, Charlene, when it comes to inflation, we know that inflation is not just prices going up. It's mm -hmm. actually the buying power of our money on the world market. Exactly. That's what that's what really happens. And there's a lot of things that we can do. And one of the first things we can do, and I'm this was put out by Capital One. I'm looking at theirs. Their, their suggestion here. They talk about how you can cut costs at home. And these are some of the things we don't normally think about. 
but they recommend that you can program your thermostat if you have a programmable one or if it's still manual, not a problem, but to maybe increase your degrees in the summertime, make it one or two degrees warmer than you would normally run your air conditioning. And it might be a little uncomfortable, but uh, it's one way of cutting back on the consumption of electricity. And we don't run our home uh, real warm or, or real cool or anything like that. I think we're around 79 degrees. I think we keep it because we got that uh, programmable thing to keep running until the humidity comes down. And that's really what makes your hot, your house sticky on the inside of humidity here in Texas. So, yeah. but we keep it like that. And we don't want it real cool. Like some homes are almost like a refrigerator. <laughs> Because when you go outside, that is a tremendous adjustment for your body to make. It is. And you're going to feel the heat a lot more. And, uh, you know, I, now I do believe in sleeping cool and comfortable. <laughs> but in the daytime, you know, if, you know, if you need two showers a day, well, you know, so what? <laughs> and, that, and that also brings up another thing we don't normally think about. Our water heater. Yes. We don't need it as hot in the summer as we do in the winter. So we can churn, make the adjustment there to keep the water not nearly as hot. That will also cut energy costs because both of those, the air conditioning and the water heater, they pull a lot of uh, amperage. They use, use up a lot of uh, electricity and that can lower your bill. In fact, uh, they're talking about uh, turning your water heater's temperature back from 140 to 120 degrees wow. Fahrenheit. That can help you save as much as 22% annually on your utility bill. And see, that's something that's very easy to do. Uh, it's not hard. And it may not be as, I mean, my wife likes to take, I, I tease her and she takes a shower. I say, you like to use the scald and scrape method. <laughs> I'm, I can't, I can't stand a hot shower. I really can't. And that's just me. As long as it's warm enough, I might not get in there when it's cold, but it's got to be warm enough where it's, you know, when I put my head under the faucet, my, it's got to be warm to my scalp. I can't stand coolness there. That's, that's my body temperature. Well, and, cooler is healthier. So it's healthier for us if we turn that down a little. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And there's some other things that you can do here. And I'm going to, turn this over to Charlene in just a second, but you can make sure like in the winter time, that's when you really feel it. You put your hands up around the door, feel around the door frame, the openings between the door and the frame and same is true with your windows. If you feel cold air coming in the winter time, get some caulk and have, you know, if you don't know how to do it, have someone caulk the windows and the door frames and seal it off. Exactly. That will not allow the heat from the summer to come in as well as the cold. And that will also help reduce your energy bill. And uh, let's see what else I want to say here. Uh, if you're struggling, it's a talk about consider relief options. If you're struggling to pay for your utilities, you might be able to get help with uh, some of your home energy bills. And they have a link there that you can click on. But the main thing of it is, is just take a look at your home first. Be prudent. And be sure and check out your light bulbs. That's a tremendous, because we all need light. We understand that. But if we replace our bulbs with the in, installing energy efficient light bulbs, not only do we use less energy, but those light bulbs last longer than the old, old style incandescent. And that's a, that's a good place to start, isn't it? It is. It is. And I can share it for when we're, we're talking about electricity use. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. about, and this is something I'm guilty of, is they're saying don't leave your computer on all the time. Don't oh, leave it yeah. running all the time because it does tap a lot of energy. And that's something I have so many plugged in, something that you need to watch. And then like the dishwasher, you don't need to run it every time. Wait until it gets full until you run it. Um, mm -hmm. The dryer, when you're washing and drying your clothes, wait till you get a full load and then hang your clothes out instead mm -hmm. of running dryer there's little things that you can do that are going to add up if you do all these little things they're going to add up and they're going to make a big difference mm -hmm. so that's um a, a way to reduce your electricity 
cost. You know, watch what you have plugged in. Uh, the common sense of turn the lights out. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing that um, they, they're they talking about is to track your spending. And mm -hmm. it seems so simple, but it works. When you write down what you spend and you're aware of it, it, it helps you understand, oh, wait a minute, maybe I don't, I don't need that coffee today or that mm -hmm. two coffees today it, it gets you thinking about what what you really spend your money on and yeah. and how to get on a budget and mm -hmm. you have to write down when you're on a budget you have to write down what your expenses are and mm -hmm. it, when you do that it helps you put things together and know where your money's going and one of the big things that um, we get stuck in and i'm guilty of this too is to reevaluate the subscriptions you sign up on apps you get sus subscriptions and they start adding up and you don't yeah. realize it, but then it comes due at the end of the year it's 20 30 40 50 dollars they add up even if it's mm -hmm. 10 a month so just yeah. to go back and there are some apps that can check that for you but you need to be aware of where your money's going and you're not going to yeah. be aware if you don't make that budget and you don't track mm -hmm. where yeah. every every dime is going yeah that's true because i know some people when they play games on their computers or or laptops or phones or whatever um uh, they'll pay so much in a month and just kind of like uh, when i listen to uh Pandora. They want you to pay for ad free. Well, I don't care about listening to an ad. I'll just block it out. But see those kind of little, you know, little expense here, you know, a few bucks here, a few bucks there, it starts adding up. It does. And, and Charlie and I like to share something about Donna. Donna was trying to talk to her teenage son. And in fact, he was in his twenties, excuse me. And he was complaining, didn't have enough money. Oh. Well, Donna knew his habits. <laughs> <laughs> He'd stop a convenience store, you know, spend 15, 20 bucks here, there. And she started telling him, listen, I know you need those things or you want those things. Buy them at the supermarket <laughs> or yeah. Sam's Club or somewhere else. Keep them with you in your car or take them with you and buy your you know, soda pops or whatever you drink and take it with you. And just start figuring out what you actually spent for those items, as opposed to what you're spending at each time you stop at a convenience store. I love and he, that. I and love he, that. it shocked him. Mm -hmm. And we, we're all guilty. Yeah. We, go, we go stop somewhere for gas. We go in to use the restroom or something. We come back out. We got to buy something before we get out of there. <laughs> we do. That's the well, thing. We just bought <laughs> gas. We can use the restroom and I feel guilty, right? <laughs> I mean, you know, but we walk by there. Snickers. Oh, man. I might need That's, that. Oh, yeah. I got to have that <laughs> Snickers. And women, I got to have something to wash it down with. <laughs> when, I, when I go on trips, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my wife makes sure I will not starve. Good because work. she makes sandwiches and stuff or you know, puts doodads and stuff in the car and she'll put a cooler in there and water and stuff. And mm -hmm. so doing that, here's the beauty in that. When I get ready to get something, since I told, told her what to buy or she knows what to buy, <laughs> guess what? I eat what I want to eat. <laughs> I don't have to be like, okay, uh, let's see what they got here. Hmm. <laughs> no, I don't think I want any Skittles, no licorice. No, 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 no. Let's see. What else they got here? You know, <laughs> you know, I mean, it just takes, you know, you can get what you want. It costs less money. And there's a lot of ways like that we can save money. Now, I know a lot of people are working, husband and wife, two, you've got two incomes, you're both working, and the poor ladies, my goodness gracious, I got to tip my hat to you because you, you work you got to come home. You got to feed the, you know, your family. And, but when you stop and pick up something, even though it's convenient, it's also expensive. It is. It starts adding up. So, I mean, these are the ways we got to look at it to be able to survive inflation. And in the process, ladies and gentlemen, this is critical. Do not let problems like that that's above and beyond your care and control destroy your attitude or drag you down 
Exactly. Because that's a that's a price you can't pay in that right, Charlene. That's right. Because we all make mistakes. We all get frustrated. But how you look at yourself, how you look at the world, that optimistic attitude, you've got to keep it. And you've got to just go back to the thing. And, uh, hey, let's go back. Let's plan our menu so that we don't want to go through that drive through on the way home so that we don't get off of the budget. And when we budget, and we plan, we're going to be proud of, and then be proud of yourself at the end of the day and say, I did it. And if you yeah. didn't do it, then go back and say, okay, I'm going to do it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And you've got to hold yourself accountable, but you also, it's important how we talk to ourselves. And Amen. That we are our own best friends. We need to encourage each other. And the way that we encourage each other, we need to talk to ourselves that same way. Because we mm -hmm. spend all day talking to ourselves. Let's make it be positive and be aware when it's not, how we can mm -hmm. go back and change that. You're absolutely correct. And there's other ways that you can cut your cost. <clears throat> I mean, here I am on television, right? <laughs> I haven't had cable TV in 20 years. <laughs> That's right. I haven't either. And, and the reason why is because I asked AT&T, who I was with, I says, I'd like to have cable, but why do I have to have all these channels that I never do watch? Mm -hmm. I mean... I just don't watch them. Yeah. And what he told me was that many years ago, all these companies got together and they petitioned Congress to make it a law that when anybody ordered cable TV, these shows would have to be in the base package. That's why it doesn't matter what cable TV company you're looking at. The base package has those same shows there. Wow. And I said, you know, that rubs me the wrong way. That goes mm -hmm. against the freedom of choice. It does. So therefore, I'm not going to pay money out of my pocket to employ shows that cannot earn their own keep. That's right. And I'm true to my school there because our show, you know, we're sponsored and by the seven men, uh, the seven levels of truth by Mr. Bill Heinrich good friend of ours. We're also sponsored by the magazine, the new magazine coming up, uh, Hometown Good News magazine. We're excited about that. Oh, yeah. But we're earning our own keep. That's what makes you free. Think about that. Think about that, you know. I mean, if we were in that, I mean, if they had us own all the cable networks, as you got to take, you know, messages of inspirational stories, TV on the basic package, uh, I wouldn't complain, <laughs> but, but I mean, I'm proud to say it makes us feel a lot better with our integrity and our dignity that we've earned the right due to the content that we deliver and our personal banalities <laughs> <laughs> that you choose to watch us. And we're so thankful for that. And we're very, very grateful for that. And, uh, yes, we are. Uh, we're getting in the six digits a month in impressions and, you know, I don't know how many thousands of viewers a month, but it's up there. And we're one of the top shows on E360 TV. And we're very, very honored for that. And we've worked hard for it, but it's been a labor of love. Because Charlene and Donna and all the rest, they love to watch me labor. We do. We love what we do. <laughs> love and, and laughing at you, Jim. <laughs> I tell you, yeah, because we, you know, people watch shows. I don't care what it is. It's one of three reasons. It's either for educational things. If you're listening to a podcast going down the road, it's either for educational purposes, entertainment purposes, or what our show falls into, infotainment. We provide some info, info and I provide the tainment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But when it comes to ways to cut your expenses, this here is a big one. Cell phones. Mm -hmm. Shop around. They're getting very, they've been competitive for a long time, but many times we get caught up in the process. We got this, we got that, we got, but I mean, shop around. There's ways, there's, there's a lot of things that you add to your cell phone that, you know, you, that really doesn't serve you. Everything that you buy should serve you. Think about that. That's why you buy groceries. You buy groceries to feed you 
And you owe it to yourself to, to be prudent in your shopping and to buy groceries that will nourish your body. Because um, let's be honest, you know, <laughs> let your food be your medicine. Who was it? It was, uh, uh, I think it was Hippocrates. He was a father of modern medicine, but he was also in favor of natural cures over man-made medicine cures. Okay. And uh, that, that's the truth. He actually got an argument about that. But my point being, you know, when you're having health problems and you're not eating correctly, you can rest assured what you have been eating is now eating you. Exactly. That's the way the world turns. So you owe it to yourself to look at your, uh, your grocery budget, mm -hmm. buy good nourishing food that will serve you because you're worthy of that. Yeah. And that's true with any type of business. You do business that with that, whoever it might be regardless of what it might be, whether it's business or professional, whatever, to give them your money, that must be a benefit to you. It's got to be a win-win situation for everybody. And cutting Maybe. expenses, yeah. In fact, I'm working on that right now, cutting my cell phone expenses, but hmm. I just did. And I dropped, I, I'm telling you, I dropped about almost $40 a month. I didn't realize how much I was paying for extra things that you don't need. And mm -hmm. I know when you, um, when you add payment things on and you buy things, you don't realize what you're doing. Sometimes it's easier to just pay that off and have a lower, lower bill, but it's just out, get, get your plan around, get a notepad out, write down everything. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of unnecessary things on there. And even if you can take $20 off your phone bill, it, it, it adds up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 20 bucks a month. 20, what's, what's 20 times 12? Well, times 10, that's 212. So two more, that'd be, that'd be $240 a month. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And $240 a month, might, that might fill up your, uh, I mean, $240 a year, that oh. might fill up your gas tank one time. <laughs> <laughs> but it's getting true <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah we're uh but we're going to survive this ladies and gentlemen we really will uh we're going through a cycle right now it's a down cycle the main thing of it is is don't let this drag you down mm -hmm. don't let it rob you of your happiness and your joy and jubilee there's been many people who have went through many different experiences in their life hardships, but they never, ever, ever let it extinguish the candle in the eyes of their soul. You see the light in their eyes. You see a smile on their face. That's right. And when you learn their story, you go like, oh, my goodness, that person is special. And you are special, too. You're very special. You owe it to yourself to enjoy the love and abundance of this universe. And even though we're going to go through some things, we're going to be faced with some things beyond our control. We're going to let it go because we're not going to let it worry us, aggravate us and rob us of our positive energy and drag us down, which also will drag down your health. It absolutely will. This yeah. is our life and it's our time and we need to enjoy every minute of it. It's mm -hmm. not easy. We're, you know, life is never easy. Everybody goes through trauma and in uh, hills and things that we've got to trudge through but we've got to have a positive attitude we got to keep each other positive um mm -hmm. and that's what's going to get you through this is your life enjoy it we mm -hmm. were meant to enjoy it and let's talk a little bit more about groceries there's i i know a lot of uh, people i'm trying to think of someone off the top of my head but a lot of mothers when they cook stuff they will prepare more than what they need because they can freeze it Yes. And they can save it. And it also makes it cheaper when they come home and it saves more time in gas because they don't have to stop somewhere to pick up something for dinner. Exactly. They can go home and heat up the leftovers and feed them. And you know what? Kids may complain about it. Uh, but you know what? I've never known leftovers put anybody in the graveyard. Nope. <laughs> Actually, it's yeah. nice to have a home-cooked meal. It's, it is. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, you know, let's talk a little bit about the greatest generation. They went through the depression. They had nothing. <laughs> they had nothing. Yeah. And what a lot of people, you know, don't realize that during the depression years, when people didn't have anything, they were homeless, they were jobless. There were a lot of people became millionaires. Wow. And right, right away, someone would think, how could that be? No one had any money. But the people who became millionaires, these were people who were innovators, innovators in their life. Mm -hmm. And I've told this story before, and this is a fun story. There was a husband and wife, and they decided during this doom and gloom, they figured that they would share that one thing they could do was make cakes. And they made these cakes and they drove around in their car selling cakes out of the trunk of their car for just five cents a piece. Wow. And the thing about this story was that these folks, they actually started uh, with nothing. They were poor. They didn't have a job. They didn't know where to turn to. And they just decided, well, you know, uh, we just got to, you know, we just got to do what we can do. Because they also knew that during this depression time that people wanted a little taste of home, you might say, or they wanted to have something they could enjoy, they could take their mind away from the doom and gloom of every day. And the gentleman and his wife was O.D. McKee, and they started selling five-cent snack cakes out of the back of a 1928 Whippet, W-H-I-P-P-E-T. Now, that's a, <laughs> that was a car company in those days. Him and his wife, Ruth, that's all they did. And then they, they saved their eager, you know, little, <clears throat> little meager amount of money that they earned. And they were really thought they were had really advanced and they had when they bought their first little bakery in the front was the bakery wow. and the sales counter in the back was a curtain that wow. separated the front and the back and behind the curtain was their living quarters. Wow. That's how poor they were. And then in 1960, they were able to build a bakery to their standard and they wondered what should they call these cakes that they make, because they started expanding, making other cakes. What should they call it? And they decided to name it after their granddaughter. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how Little Debbie Snacks got born. Wow. I Think about that. that. Love that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's a success story where people saw a need and they knew they weren't going to get rich overnight. But they had the stickability because they knew this depression would not last forever. This slump that we're in now with this inflation, it's not going to last forever. That's the good news. So the main thing that is Charlene and I want to share with you today is just a little information on how you can start doing some things. So it doesn't rob you blind like a bandit in the process, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And who doesn't love cake? What a great idea. What a nice story. And mm -hmm. just to keep going, don't yeah. give up. And little by little, just like we talk about the electricity, the dishwasher, the light bulbs, all those little things, writing things down so that you know you're planning, these all add up. And it's not going to be like you said, it's not going to happen overnight, but those mm -hmm. little things, you don't give up. You don't get um, a, a bad attitude. You got to stay positive and we're going to get through this and we mm -hmm. encourage each other, you know, days we get up and we have bad days. It's going to be all right. Jim is great at, at uh, lifting everybody up. So that's, uh, <laughs> you know, it's something that we need to do for each other. And you're wonderful at that. Anytime anybody's not feeling it, Jim's got a story. He's got something to lift us up. So thank you, Jim. <laughs> well, you're quite welcome in that. And, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's sometimes in life you go through things, you experience things. And, and this is going to sound horrible, but I'm going to say it. Uh, you know, my attitude in life 
Uh, this is the way that I'm wired. And uh, I tell people I survived Vietnam in 69 and 70. I survived Agent Orange. I survived COVID <laughs> and uh, haven't had it, don't want it, and haven't had any of the, I know some people are for the shot, some people are against it. Let's just say I made my own choice on that route. And, uh, you know, of course, I had my heart attack. I survived that. But my point being is that what are you going through in your life? Let's, let's take COVID, for example. When that, when that first hit the news, we were all, if you were not at least concerned, borderline scared, oh. you're, you're either uh, a person known for not telling the truth or there's something <laughs> wrong with your head. <laughs> because exactly. they were making it sound like we're going to be see people walking down the street and they're going <laughs> to drop like flies. I'm going, like, oh, man, that's well. <laughs> I've heard of Mother Nature thinning the herd, but I think this is a little bit extreme here, you know? <laughs> it's like a sci-fi movie. It really yeah. was. <laughs> and look how that fear gripped a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'd see people riding down the road out here in the country inside their vehicle wearing a mask. <laughs> And I look at that. I remember this one guy came by. I'm, I'm not making this up. Had a big, you know, had a white mask on. Of course, we know they're uh, limited on what they're, they can filter out. <laughs> He's driving his truck. Nobody else in the truck with him. Got his mask on, looks at me. And I'm looking at him. And I'm thinking. <laughs> as he went by, and I'm thinking. Am I missing something here? <laughs> Do I need to, you know, am I slow between the ears? I mean, help me out here. Because it may be one of those moments where you go, you've seen, you've seen things in your life when you go like, okay, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I guess. All right. <laughs> it's kind of like, it reminds me of that 1969 song, a number one hit for Sly and the Family Stone, everyday people. And some of the lyrics were different strokes for different folks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that 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 yeah. fits. <laughs> it feel better. It made it yeah. feel better. <laughs> and you look back now, and it kind of upsets me a little bit because people who were not in the medical industry, mm -hmm. who knew nothing, they wouldn't be able to about about the only thing they could do is give you a band aid, put a band aid on you, or maybe put a thermometer in your mouth and read a thermometer. That's about it. Exactly. But all of a sudden. They were subject matter experts mm -hmm. on telling us how this virus was going to rip us apart, tear us up, destroy our lives. We got to do this. We got to we got to live in fear and, <laughs> and help me out. This is another one of those different strokes for different folks kind of a deal. Who was the Einstein that came up? Says the first thing you do, Merle, you go to the supermarket. You get us some toilet paper, woman. <laughs> I mean, what? <laughs> I mean, the back of the truck up. Yeah, I mean, we were all like, you know, trained. Go to the supermarket. Okay, I'll go get the toilet paper, you know. <laughs> I was standing in the Brenham H-E-B supermarket. Now, those of you that know me know I got a warped sense of humor. Some people know me real well, so it's a lack of sense, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I saw some people in there I didn't know. And I had my cell phone on had my cell phone with me and I just picked it up. Of course it was, you know, just like it is now it's not on because I'm on shit on the show. And I said, yeah, Horace, it's Jim. I'm up here at Brenham HEB. They got a lot of toilet paper up here. And I saw some <laughs> people look at me like, don't tell them that what's wrong with you. <laughs> I mean, I was just teasing. And, and these people were about, I said, I'm, I'm just kidding with you folks. It's not on. Well, I still don't think that's funny. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious, but I waited until I walked around an aisle away from before I started giggling to myself. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, it's little things like that that can rattle your mental birdcage and rob you of your health and your happiness. Exactly. I mean, how come Beanie Weenies didn't make the uh, list of make sure you got plenty of Beanie Weenies? <laughs> Toilet paper? Toilet paper. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We better take this show up a notch and get it out of the gutter, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. But, you know, it comes to a cutting expenses, Charlene. 
another way to oh <laughs> use coupons uh, oh my yeah, goodness i love mm. you <laughs> i used to hate go ahead and share how go ahead and share what you want to do about coupons <laughs> Well, you can find coupons online. You can still cut them out of paper. I do. I do. I have a daily or a, a weekly routine where I sit down and I collect uh, coupons because then when you plan out what your menu is and what you want to buy, you add those coupons on. I'm telling you, they make a huge difference. I know mm -hmm. it's work, but with the online stuff, it's not as bad. You can look mm -hmm. up things uh, and you get into a routine of the things that you like and you can earn mm -hmm. points do different things but mm -hmm. you look it up and um as long as it's what you want and you're not changing your mm -hmm. things and trying something new that you don't like then it's a problem but you know mm -hmm. coupons are out there take that time it's it's yeah. within your planning it's in, within your budgeting just yeah. sit down and clip your coupons and you can still do it they still have paper coupons um yeah. and they have them online so take the yeah. time can save hundreds of dollars yeah and they got those codes too you can use can't they mm -hmm. absolutely yeah. somebody might get their kids their tech kids to hey let's have a little game how many coupons can you get for us or whatever exactly. you know either online or out of have some fun out of it and the reason why uh back in the 70s we were first married evelyn and i've been married 50 some odd years uh I think my family said she deserves a medal or something. I don't know. I didn't pay attention to them. But I'd go to the soup. I'd be at work, and she'd give me a list to pick up things on the way home. Yeah, here. Okay, and I got a coupon for this, and I got a coupon for that. And I got a, Okay. Mm -hmm. So being a guy, okay, I'll put the coupons in my pocket. You know, I want to forget them. Got the list. I should have put the coupons and the list together. Yes. <laughs> strike one so i get off work i gotta grab these things at the supermarket pull out the list get the items pay for them go home why didn't you use the coupons I'm like, oh, oh man whoops yep. <laughs> at least your wife is very organized <laughs> yep and uh i didn't do any hard time in the hacienda over that one but <laughs> i was not real high on the <laughs> on the sugar list that night, I can tell you that much. <laughs> because you mess with a woman's budget, you're going to get in trouble. Mm -hmm. If you're a guy out there, rest, rest assured, it's kind of like a honey-do list. She'll give you one, but you give her one. Hey, honey, get these <laughs> things done. Well, let me know how that works out for you. <laughs> That's a train wreck getting ready to happen. But, you know, realistically, you know, there's ways that we can do it. Just take a deep breath, relax, and look. And, you know, read blogs, you know, ask people questions. How, how, what are you doing these days to save money? Exactly. Obviously, a big thing is to organize your trips going into town. Yeah, gas is, gas is a commodity now. Yeah, it certainly is. It's been, a, yeah, it's been a commodity, but now we're seeing the effects of the roller coaster of that commodity. Yeah. I mean... Uh, I remember, you know, an oil spill out in the Gulf and gas prices jump up. Well, you know, the same gas that they bought is already in the ground in the tank. And they're going to charge me more per gallon because there's some accident out in the Gulf. That's that's how goofy it is. Yeah. But it's really made me rather than say, OK, I need to go to Ace Hardware and pick up something. OK. If I really need to go to Ace Hardware, and I'm just saying Ace Hardware as an example, I will check with Evelyn and say, listen, I need to run uptown and get this. Is there anything else that you need while I'm uptown? Mm -hmm. And I'll only make that trip if it's necessary. Normally what happens, uh, there's certain things I get at Tractor Supply, and I don't get any compensation for either one of those companies. I'm just using that example. And I'll mention to Elvis, I says, next time we go uptown, either you or me, I need this in tractor supply. And I'm going to say, okay, well, I'll pick that up when I do this. Okay, that's cool. And she does. That woman's got a memory. Like, you wouldn't believe. You tell me something, you better write it down and stick it on my forehead so I can see it in the rearview mirror, you know. <laughs> I mean, that's just the way my world turns. And uh, that's just one of my shortcomings. But I've learned to 
try and train my brain. Notice I we use the three letter word try. Try. Try, try. to train my brain. Yeah. And it's and been very trying. Mistakes are okay. That's how we learn and yeah. we do yeah. better. <laughs> yeah. But um, when it comes to cutting our, expen our expenses, coupons is a very great way to do it. And when you look at, uh, if, if you're on a fixed income and there's also local uh, charities, and I know people don't like charities. I understand that. But there's local food banks, food pantries. Yeah. I work with food pantries. And no one's going to be, you know, look down on you. And please don't be embarrassed. If you go to a, a food pantry, get in touch with them, says, hey, I'm going through a little hard time right now. And I was wondering if I could get some additional groceries, just some basics. Exactly. Because you know what those people will say? Absolutely. Then they, they may have you fill out a form, you know, and, and it's not going to get real personal or anything like that. This got to have a record of who got the food and basic things like that. I mean, they just can't say, well, I gave, you know, three bags of groceries to a person with no documentation. That's why they need to, the uh, records for that, because it's a it's a paper trail, but it's it's to cover them for giving away groceries. But they will be more than happy to do that. Churches are another great way to, to, to find some money, but don't go there and just be, you know, I need some money for gas. Okay. Have the courtesy to write to the church and say, this is who I am. And I'm having a little tough time. And I was wondering if you folks could, you know, Share with me some, some funds to be able to buy, or you could buy this for me. If, if my kids need back to school supplies mm -hmm. and ask for something specific like that, there's ways and there's people out there because I'm going to teach you something here. Well, maybe not teach. I'm going to share something with you. Emerson Brantley is our director of marketing. He works with us too here and he's a host. We got to really up, upgrade our uh, intro video because, you know, it's still got me young and good looking on there. It's old, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but Emerson told me, he says, Jim, remember one thing. There is always more money than there are deals available. Hmm. And I, like I thought, hmm, yeah. So that's applicable across the board, ladies and gentlemen. What that means, if you're struggling, there are people out there who are eager to help you. Yes. But they got to know what your need is. Exactly. They've got to see for people to, let's say people to advertise with us. They got to see that they're a good fit for us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, if they sell products to rap groups or rap people, young people like rap, we're not a good fit for them. Demographically or psychographically, we're not a good fit for them. Okay. And, uh, but I mean, they got to see that your cause fits their desire and their heart to help mm -hmm. and expect to get no's. It's okay to get a no. Because yeah, after all, it's their money, it's their right to hold on to it. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, be open, be honest, and they may give you some advice on how you could cut some expenses. Mm -hmm. that is valuable to you. Thank them. And then give them a report. Say, yeah, I followed your advice and I've done this and I've done that and so forth. And I'm also, I need a little more help. And you know someone who could help me, you know, uh, pay my electric bill this month. Maybe give me half. Of it. Yeah. That and if they see that you're trying, they're going to try too. Because it's got to be a win-win situation. Because uh, when you just ask people just for a, a flat charity, hey, give me something. You know, I don't know who you are. I need gas money. I need, well, who doesn't need gas money? Yeah, That's too yeah. generalized. They got to get to know you, right, Charlene? Exactly. Exactly. And they're out there. There's organizations out there. Food mm -hmm. Bank, or the, like you said, the United Ways in every city. They oh, set up. Yeah. Food banks that just go around and around. They they are there mm -hmm. to help 
people. But like you said, you do need to put your name in. You do, mm-hmm. you do need to let them know in the churches. There, the, There's organizations set up to help. But yeah. don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid to get out there and mm-hmm. let them know who you are. Yeah, because everybody, you know, everybody's had more month than they've got money. At least everybody I know. Mm-hmm. And, and we all not, get into situations. Yeah. And, and then when you get helped by people, then you want to help when you can. So yeah. it's yeah. about sharing, you know, it's about sharing yeah. your experiences. Yeah, like if they give you food at the food bank, mm-hmm. think how they would feel if you say, listen, you guys have helped me with some food and I'd like to to help others. I'd like to work here a little bit and help others to show my appreciation. How much stock and value would that give you? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's Monday. We normally carry on our Monday show for three days, but we won't today. We're out of time. <laughs> and Charlene, it's so good to have you back with us. And uh, we're, we're so... Yeah, it's so wonderful. She does our commercials for us and all that. So we're we got a graphics guy working on the commercial, and she's going to do the the voiceover rather than hearing my old voice. And uh, it's uh, we're so honored and so blessed to be here. And yeah. the reason we have experienced what we've experiencing is because our entire focus has been on how can we be a blessing to you out there in TV land. Exactly. Well, ladies and gentlemen, our time is gone. Charlene, thank you again. We really appreciate it so much. Thank you, Jim. Yeah. And ladies and gentlemen, as we close each and every broadcast, we like to say be sure and love yourself first. That's the very first thing in your life. Love yourself first, then you can love others. Because in your life, you have the universal, constitutional, and the creator's, you know, It's a law. It's a universal law. You are entitled to live a life of love and abundance. Exactly. So so don't let the muck and the mire of this old life drag you down. It's not worth it. Throw it out with it. Throw it out with the garbage. (laughs) We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye.